Hello, everyone. My name is Olivia Asher, and today I'll be presenting to you the fungal solution to plastic pollution. So plastic pollution is a major threat to both human and environmental health. You've probably seen pictures of marine animals trapped in plastics, which can threaten endangered species. And additionally, microplastics can end up in the human food chain and cause endocrine problems. However, fungi can help us break down plastics and reduce this plastic pollution problem. However, there are both some limitations and some possibilities of using fungi to break down plastics. And today we're gonna to explore both of those. But before we get into the fungi, let's talk a little bit more about the current state of plastic production and pollution globally. So plastics first started showing up around 1950, and since then, 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic have been produced. And every year, we keep increasing the amount of plastic produced. So in 2020, about 400 million metric tons of plastic were produced, and this number is expected to double by 2035 and double again by 2050. Globally, about almost all plastic produced is eventually handled as waste. And of this waste plastic, only 9% is recycled while the rest is incinerated, and most of it is landfilled or released into the environment. And this is the plastic that we really need to target to um, reduce the problem of pollution. And one of these po big pollution issues with plastic is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So this is a large floating plastic patch of plastic waste that is almost the size of Texas in the Pacific Ocean. So going forward, we want to eliminate this patch as much as possible and avoid adding to it anymore. But in order to do that, we need some better mechanisms to break down plastics. You may be wondering, why don't we just recycle plastics? Well, there are some significant barriers to the current methods of plastic recycling. So for example, not all plastic can be recycled. So that's a big proportion of plastic that's never going to be taken care of in that way. Additionally, plastic recycling can cost more than using virgin plastics, which would be newly produced plastics at this time. And companies are not going to spend more money to be economic, um, environmentally friendly most of the time. Additionally, not all plastic is going to be able to go to a recycling facility. So recycling facilities take a lot of money, effort, and specialization to maintain. And not all countries have that. Not all areas have that. And plastic that's already out in the environment, like out in the Pacific garbage patch, is going to be really hard to get to a plastic recycling facility. So we need to improve plastic recycling from where it's at now in order to um, tackle the waste problem. And fungi can play a role in that. So let's talk about how fungi can help us reduce plastic pollution. So fungi have a couple of useful properties which could be harnessed for breaking down plastic. So first of all, they're already found in areas where plastic waste accumulates, which would be the soil and ocean for other bodies of water, fresh water as well. Um, they also exhibit filamentous growth, which can help them penetrate and physically break down plastics and they excrete of huge variety of enzymes that can break down organic polymers. So the two main environments where plastic pollution is found are soil and water, and fungi are already growing on the plastic present in these environments. So there were some researchers in Switzerland who looked at plastic found, fun, excuse me, fungi found on plastic in floating on the shores of lakes, um, most of this plastic was polyurethane or polyethylene, and they found that some of these fungi could break down the polyurethane found there. Um, there's also some researchers in South Saudi Arabia that found fungi growing on low density um, polyethylene films could, in mangrove swamps in Saudi Arabia, could also break down that plastic. So fungi are already evolving to break down plastic in the natural environment. Um, however, since plastics only been around since around 1950, they are not quite efficient as efficient at breaking it down as they are organic material that's been around a lot longer. Um, so how are fungi attaching to and breaking down plastic naturally? 
So fungal colonization of plastic is assisted by their filamentous growth and their production of hydrophobans. So filamentous growth allows fungi, fungal hyphae to penetrate the plastic layer and start physically breaking it down. And the reason that they can do this is because they produce proteins called hydrophobans. So plastic is a hydrophobic surface, which means it's hard for a lot of organisms to grow on it. Um, however, fungi are used to growing on hydrophobic surfaces since plants, cutin is also hydrophobic. So hydrophobins allow the fungi to attach to the plastic and break it down. So in this figure, you can see F is sort of the original surface of this. I believe it's a polyethylene film and G and F are after the film has been colonized by the fungi. And you can see it is much more broken down and it has these fungal filaments penetrating it and starting to destroy the plastic. Additionally, when you look at plastic and you know, organic material like trees, they might not seem that similar, but in reality, both of them are on organic polymers, which fungi are specialized at breaking down. So they have generally carbon-carbon and carbon-oxygen bonds, and both can be degraded with the same or similar enzymes, which include these falling enzymes that are produced by fungi. However, um, current, current research on plastic degrading fungi has found that fungi can degrade some traditional plastics as well as some biodegradable plastics. So these are plastics specifically engineered to make them easier to break down because some barriers to breaking down plastics are the stability of plastics. So introducing groups like the metal ions um, or other organic materials like starch into the plastic can help make it more easy to break down. And some species of fungi that are involved in plastic breakdown include the following. And if you look at this list, you'll notice that we have some um, sort of general saffro fungi like aspergillus, as well as some plant pathogenic fungi like leptospheria and some specialized lignin degraders like Trimetes versicolor. So a broad variety of fungi and fungal enzymes and different types of fungi can be used to break down plastic. However, a current barrier to this process is the fact that fungi are not efficient at degrading plastic. So this is a little illustration I made based on a paper that looked at microbial consortia, which included fungi degradation of specifically biodegradable plastics. And even after one year of colonization, the microbes are only able to reduce the weight of the plastic by 30%, which is not enough to tackle issues like the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So we need to work on optimizing these enzymes produced by fungi and other microbes to break down plastics, as well as optimizing the plastics for breakdown. Um, keep in mind, fungi are so good at degrading plants and complex organic polymers because they've had millions of years to evolve this ability. But plastics have not been around for millions of years, and we do not have time to wait for organisms to be able to break down uh, plastics themselves. Instead, it would be a really good idea to optimize um, the enzymes already being produced using directed evolution and look at the processes that fungi use to break down organic polymers and use that to um, understand how to better engineer plastic that is going to be more receptive to breakdown. Luckily, um, in the United States, the Department of Energy um, and the assorted national labs that are part of the Department of Energy are working on a project called Blottle, Bio-Optimized Technologies to Keep Thermoplastics Out of Landfills and the Environment. And this process is really focused on making plastics that are more um, susceptible to breakdown as well as designing catalysts to break down the plastic. So there is a lot more research, of course, going on globally with plastic degradation, but this is one um, effort that is occurring in the U.S. and is pretty fun to look into if you ever get a chance. So hopefully in the future, we will have some well-designed fungal enzymes that can break down plastics and help reduce um, the waste and pollution problems that we're currently facing. So thank you for listening to my presentation, and please feel free to reach out and let me know any questions that you may have.